Hello everyone and welcome to Synchronous Online Teaching Strategies. This is Math Workshop. My name is Teresa Wills. I'm an assistant professor out of George Mason University in the Mathematics Education Leadership Department. Um, and this is an example of how I teach regularly. Um, I started teaching online a decade ago and six years ago I started using Google Slides exclusively because of their collaboration, interactive nature, and it has more student voice than I can possibly give in a face-to-face -face class. I know some of you are transitioning right now, and I hope I can give you a couple tips to be thinking about as you're thinking about implementing Math Workshop into your class. Uh, the link to the slides are in the chat box. You're going to have two things open. The slides will be open and also collaborate open. That'll mean two tabs or two windows. Um, and uh, on slide one, you'll notice that there are several links um, that you can click. My email address, my website, uh, my Twitter handle, and my YouTube channel. I stay pretty active on all of them, so feel free to bookmark those. On slide two are some quick links to the two most important things that teachers uh, find on my website. One, where are all the templates? I don't want to make things myself, so there they are. And the other one is recordings of this session and other sessions. Um, this recording should be up by tomorrow morning um, and all the materials from these sessions. Um, let's see, on slide three is um, an ad from the program that I am in at George Mason. If you are interested in becoming a math specialist, we do our courses 100% online, live, synchronous, just like you're experiencing today. Uh, and there's information there for you. And then I join you, uh, ask you to join me down on slide four, five, six, or seven, pick a space. And tell us, what are you celebrating today? You'll grab a text box and draw it directly there on that slide. And I'll ask a couple of you to turn on your microphones and share a little bit more. So who is heading to the lake tomorrow? What lake are you going to and what are you excited to do? Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Melanie and we are headed to Lake Anna. I've been stuck in the house with a three-year-old and a one-year-old, and I am excited to just let them run and swim and play. Oh, I have so many fond memories of that lake. I went to Spotsylvania High School, so that was in our backyard. Um, I hope you have a wonderful time there. Um, let's see. Uh, somebody said that they're celebrating the success of teachers with the last quarter of online instruction and their growth with technology and I'm curious how are you going to celebrate teachers growth of technology hi this is Gina we just celebrated with talking about where we started and where how they've grown and um, what they've done um, with where we started. So it was an amazing conversation and celebration. Wonderful. Um, I could use some tips. I'm doing field day with my kiddos who are rising second graders and rising third graders. Molly, how did your field day go? Hello, it went well. Um, there were lots of different activities. We had one where we had a ladder set up, and we were knocking a can down from each lever on the level on the ladder. And then we had another. We had a fun scavenger hunt, trying to find different things. And then the most recent one we did just before this was a um, shoe tower. So each of the kids got as many tennis shoes and sneakers as they could, and tried to make the tallest, most fun tower that they could. So we had a great time. That sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> I am very excited for my field day tomorrow. Um, our school is encouraging kids to upload videos onto Flipgrid so they can see each other's stuff. So that'll be kind of fun. Um, awesome. Um, Angela, how was uh, your daughter's virtual end of year ceremony? So admittedly, I was a little bit skeptical going into it, thinking like, oh, is it going to be the same? What is it going to be like? But it was so cute. They had their 
names up on the slides. They did a really cute video at the end, and we saw all the different pictures that the teachers took. It was just really nice, and getting to do it from home was a, a bonus that um, I thought I would miss being at school, but it was really actually kind of nice doing it at home. Oh, that's lovely. All right, folks, this is successes and celebrations. Um, it is a way that I can check in with all the students in my class, figure out what's going on with them. Um, I keep this very unstructured in some people's eyes that looks very messy. Um, to the online teacher with experience, they see it, the unstructure as being a place where kids can be heard in any way they want through pictures, text, word art, videos, GIFs, whatever it is. Um, they can post it on this very unstructured slide. All right, folks, um, let's dive right in. I'm going to start off on slide eight. If you would come there for me real quick, this is mostly a placeholder so I don't forget. We have a variety of experienced uh, educators with us today. Um, some educators have been doing a lot with synchronous online learning, um, specifically with interactive slides. And they might have a lot of tips and know-how already. Um, some people aren't coming with as much prior knowledge in this um, synchronous world. So if you have questions about the how-to stuff, the techie side of things, I'd be happy to stay afterwards and talk those with you at any time. My norm is that you put questions like that in the virtual parking lot. If you intend any of my sessions, the virtual parking lot is always the very last slide, and I always address everything in the virtual parking lot for anyone who wants to stay after. Um, so you're going to see a lot of cool things today. Um, keep in mind that i um, happy to share those. Just pop them down there. And then join me down on slide nine. I think everyone in here has got the link. This is the last time I'll post it for now. I'll stop spamming your chat box. Slide nine is a um, general um, mapping of what Math Workshop is, uh, the model that I plan to use today. This book is by Jennifer Lemp, and uh, Jennifer supported me in creating these slides. Um, there are three styles of the way that your one hour math class or 45 minute math class might be set up. If you are interested in what it looks like to do a task and share, I invite you to come to any of the sessions on Saturday. That is where I model this uh, style of math workshop. Um, today, we are going to look a little bit into this second or third style, which includes a lot of student stations. And so for half an hour today, you're going to be with a small group investigating a bunch of different activities in student stations. Let me give you an idea of what you'll look for. Come join me on slide 10. In a face-to-face -face class, your math workshop might include several student stations. And in those student stations, you might have uh, things for students to do, such as independent work, maybe a partner game, maybe a small group investigation. And I'm going to model today very explicitly how you will see these different things in today's fraction um, math workshop. There are two things that we're going to do as a whole group. We're going to start and end as a whole group. And then in your small group, you have six activities to browse through and interact uh, with. Uh, join me on slide 11. And let's see, we have about 50 people here. I think there's at least 50. If not, I'm going to go ahead and make more. Um, slide 11, I have uh, a which one doesn't belong. What you're going to do is you're going to come on this slide. You're going to think about which of these four quadrants just doesn't really belong and what is your rule. You're going to take that little doesn't belong symbol and you're going to move it into the quadrant that you think doesn't belong. Just grab a doesn't belong symbol and move it. If 
if you think you found one that doesn't belong, try to think of another rationale for a different one that doesn't belong. And now I want to see your thinking. Move to either slide 12 or 13. If we need even more room, there's 14. Double click on one of those areas and type your response. Why did you say that one doesn't belong? If someone else is in the same box as you, just double click somewhere else. Somebody said that the bottom right has a ratio of green that's greater uh, than one. Um, can you tell us a little bit more of why you said that and, and why might we care about that? Why might that be a real life thing to worry about? Or not worry about, be excited about. So I said ratio, um, I was just thinking about comparing the number of greens and reds. And so as I looked at it, the number of greens was larger. So the ratio of green to red, if I was to say like the total number, because there are four there, there's four in the other one. Three of them had four out of the four of them. So I, I just thought ratios. Yeah. Can anyone think of a real life reason why we might um, be looking for that bottom right one that might be uh, something that you would want to find. Have you all ever seen these cool machines? I know they've got them at Ikea. I spend way too much time there. And they have little questions. How was your service today? And they give you five choices. They're just different types of smiley faces and you pound one of them. Why might they be interested in that bottom right? On that one, it definitely has the most uh, positive feedback if, if that were the situation or whatever you want seems to be happening more often than in the others. Ah, so we've got more, more happy time, more happy customers, <laughs> indeed. Can anyone else think of a real world situation um, about why you might analyze the data and be looking for one of these that doesn't belong? Melanie, I love the one you put in the chat. Three of four dentists recommend Crest. How about the bottom left with just two faces? Some of you all said that it doesn't belong because it's just two of them. See a lot of that response. All right, so um, in a group of, of you know, children who are learning um, fraction sense, I might go on and ask several other questions. Um, I want to make sure you all have the time you need today to explore the math workshop materials. Alrighty, um, on slide 15 or 16, um, if you would just type a, a real quick sentence, how did you collaborate, interact, or have voice in this whole class number routine? Grab a box, respond on that question.
you're going to get the same question after each of the next six activities. Um, your group can uh, just think about the question out loud or they can write. You'll see there's a slide placeholder there for you. And I'm going to give you six activities to look at in the next 30 minutes. It is not nearly enough time, but try your best to explore it uh, with your teacher hat on, see what students would do, turn all your mics on, talk about it as it's going. And um, I've even given the timekeeper, if you want to assign roles, little time slots of about how much time you should spend on each activity to guide you as you move along. If you only get to a couple of them, no worries. You'll be able to uh, explore them at another time. You've got copies of all the slides. So move organically through the material, um, and we will come back at 345 uh, to discuss the different ways of thinking about Math Workshop together. Uh, slide 17 is clickable links to go into your group slide. And again, you'll roll through all of the slides in the next half an hour. All right, I'm going to set up breakout rooms now. You'll automatically be placed in it. And if anyone needs help knowing, you know, what breakout room they're in, talk with the people around you first, and I'll be in just to make sure you're in the right spot. Our breakout rooms start in three, two, one, now. Hi folks, Hi. you are group two. Your phone is on, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Hi you folks, came in, you, you are group like, three. Oh. Sorry, Donnie. Okay, <laughs> it was okay. Communicator or mayor. I'll be timekeeper. This is Susan. I opened up the group five slide deck on the original slide on slide 17. Oh. Yeah, so that should take us to. Hi folks, you guys are group six. If you want to go ahead and click on that uh, group link and turn on your microphone, say hi to everyone and uh, enjoy your math workshop. Four. Yeah. Uh, Angela, can you hear us? I know it keeps saying reconnecting for her, so I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, Daniel, what did you prefer? Uh, timekeeper. Okay. I can do whichever. I've never oh, done that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, no, um, at this point we're in groups and nobody else, but um, I guess you and Mags, but I don't know if Mags can hear us. Hi folks, you are group nine. Um, I know Max has come to another session, so um, it's okay. got, I'm pretty sure um, they've got a handle on the audio, but um, you're also able to do all of these activities as a pair. It was originally designed for pairs. Um, so feel okay. free to roll through them and, oh, there, I can hear Mike now. Okay. I'm here. Oh. Hmm. Own rule, like it could kind of be like a guess your rule. Yeah. Right. So you're. Hi there. You all are group number twelve. If you'll want to go ahead and click within there, turn on your microphones and and say hi and keep your conversation going as you explore this today.
Let's see, Caitlin and Carrie, are you guys there? Yeah, I'm there. I just made my slide. Gotcha. Oh, you guys were just working independently. No problem. Are you creating, are we creating a, a slide in a different place? I just took one of them and like tried to make my own rule with the toys that were already there. Ah, okay. It's down on it's like slide six, I just, um, got it. Hi there group. Ooh, I think I know your rule. <laughs> if I if I'm right, I almost wonder if some of these toys belong a little bit like this. <laughs> I was wondering. I was like, yep. <laughs> cool. Nice job. And that team. might really mess up their fraction. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean when they're on the edge? <laughs> We don't have to go in and out, I don't think. Right, I don't think so either. Yeah. Hi team, nice slides. I see uh, lots of different rules here. <laughs> cool. That's a good model, how do you see the fraction? Watch video, as a group model, how do you see the fraction? So these videos are just playing me in here. So now we, after watching the video, have to do this. And I think we just, somebody does it and then types it in. So one of us does it. I'll do right. it. Two, three. Yep. Okay, I see. I, oh, I didn't even count one, two. I assume the same number? It's whatever you want it to be. You could have right. picked a one or a... Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, we're not just... Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, same thing has... Okay. Okay, I guess we could have done anything. How did we collaborate, interact, and have voice in this independent and then partner activity? I wonder if we were supposed to go back and like try to figure try. out each, each other's. Yeah, I I'm guessing that's the more of the partner piece. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I think the uh, selection of animals that there are a lot of different routes that students could take it to make their own. Because mm -hmm. you could go based off the color, or I know I did it because they had their eyes closed or how they were sitting, something like that. Okay. Yeah because I was doing the Google certification and then they need me to do the, uh, the, the Gmail. And that's how we got the Gmail now on top of the FCPL. <laughs> yeah. Hi there, I wonder seven. if, if we, yes. Yeah. Oh, I was just noticing okay. uh, that you all had um, six out of the 10 toys have. Um, and I was curious how you got the number 10. It's the total. No, six, sorry, I just changed it to sixteen. This is total toys, total toys. That's that's six, and then that's I uh, five, partial, five, partial, partial. Yeah. That's right. Ah, okay. It's like uh, I I I thought about it partial to partial, like uh, part to part. Ah, let's say that's what I, I was. 
So, you know, it's really interesting. Yes. I love breakout rooms, so I can ask students that question. And the answers that they give, it's not like I'm necessarily looking for a right answer. I'm looking for more of like the right, right thought or the right questions that they ask me next. Um, so it was really cool. If, if a student were to say, well, you know, are we talking part to whole or part to part? I'm like, check, that student knows what I wanted them to know, you know? Yeah, that's true. Anyway, the question is general. It didn't specify if you need to uh, put the answer in uh, part to part or part to whole. It is like, uh, what do you see? Mm -hmm. You know, it is like an open-ended question for a, for a student to to show the thinking of those students. This is what, this is how I looked at it actually. So, we might so I wonder if. Oh, go ahead. I wonder, we have three more toy fractions. I wonder if somebody does one for five, somebody does one for six, and somebody does one for seven. And okay. we can just do our own. Collaborate, interact, or have voice in this independent partner activity. Okay, and I'll go ahead and record our thoughts if you want as the secretary. Or we can all write. Up to you. Sorry, I just went ahead and made a text box. I apologize. That's okay. That's fine, too. Um, we kind of divided. <laughs> we kind of divided and conquered at the beginning. We each took sort of a role and were able to play around with the slide ourselves after watching the video alone. Sorry, so there, you said divided and conquered the slides so we can move around. You can see things happen in real time. Mm -hmm. Only. I wonder how she set this up for us, like how she assigned us. Like I know how you can do it on other platforms, but I don't know how she did it on this platform. Like the breakout groups? Yeah, like how she created... Well, I guess because we clicked on that slot, we clicked on that group. Oh, that makes sense. So whoever clicks on that would have access to it. Just trying to think she, of how that she, we knew because of the Blackboard that we were group five. Sure, I can stick on 22. Okay. All right, I'm on 23. All right. Whoops, I left 20. There I am. <laughs> okay. Pull out. How do you get the cards? Yeah, how do you get the cards? Hi, folks. I am still trying to figure out how to Hello. make this more intuitive. Um, you can do what some of my um, kiddos call unwrapping the deck, which is where you just scoot that little uh, peach cover out of the way. Um, or you can pull the turquoise bit out. The, the turquoise is the actual card, and the little peach part just covers it up. Oh, I see. Okay. So I'll take that card and stick it down here. Sure. Okay, so then I pick a card. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to put it here. Whoops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, see what I did? I just moved the whole... Mm. Whoops. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And my turn? Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. So as you all are doing this, mm -hmm. on a side conversation, what is the math that you're thinking about when you initially place those fraction cards? Oops. I didn't hear the rest of her question. Yeah. No, me neither. Sorry about that. Um, okay. What is the math that you're thinking about as you decide where to place those fraction cards? Uh, so I'm thinking like what I would tell my kids about comparing to a half or comparing to a whole, how far you are from a half or a whole. Are we out of cards? Looks like it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. 
I yeah, I was more. thinking of, I wonder if we did something to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, well, you guys are my guinea pigs. This is my beta version of this game, so I'll have to figure out what that was. <laughs> Thanks for being a guinea pig. <laughs> and then do you... Twenty-two. They can play on twenty-one, and then we can play on twenty-two. Okay, sounds good. There we go. Okay, figured it out. So we're on um, twenty-two, right? You and me. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So you want to pull the card out first? Pull that turquoise card out from below. You play over here. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought it didn't matter where we put it. Sorry. That's okay. Oh me. Oh wait, no. Wait, there's a fraction bars. Oh, cool. And I can't figure out how to pull out the turquoise. Oh, all of them. How do we do that? I think we just, like, near the bottom, like, click on the bottom of the card, and then it, like, comes out. Hi there, group. Oh, okay. One of my um, second grade kiddos also thought of just unwrapping the deck, where you take the little peach um, topper and just move it out of the way, and then you can just take turns uh, having cards off the top. Oh, because kids are genius. Oh. That's much easier. Wait, least to greatest? All right, so least to greatest, let's see. And you also have yeah, some there. action bars. If you need them, you can just simply move that little vertical bar um, to be able to compare them. Wow. That's so cool. Um, we're going to have to move along. Hi there, group. I see, I see that you're having fun with that little game. There's also some virtual um, tools to help you visualize if you're trying to compare these fractions. Simply moving this little vertical bar on the manipulatives can help you figure out which one is bigger um, when you're comparing them. And I guess we could add to that that each person could share their different viewpoint. Mm There we go. I lost you. Teresa, yeah, I think we, Teresa, this is Anne here. When you do this, the kids, are they, is there a way to um, keep it so that the kids cannot delete the text boxes or do you just tell them if they delete it that they have to? Um, 
re retype something? It uh, you can lock some things. Um, okay. It's it's kind of up to you on which things you want to lock. Um, if the students mm -hmm. are typing it in, then you're like that's that's their text box so yes they could delete it um but i will put a link in the virtual parking lot of how to lock certain uh, attributes okay oh. and when students in a group does this save everything they've done kind of um okay uh let me put that in there too um how about how they does it save their work Ooh. yeah i think that's a question everyone will have so i'll address it right at the very end Okay, one other last question. Yeah. How easy, how quickly are you able, I did a breakout room once with my students. I, I teach 7th uh, and 8th graders, and it was really hard for me to pop. It took a lot of time for me to pop in and out. Um, is there a trick to it? You seem yep. to be able to pop yeah. in all these groups. It takes, it takes less than a second. Um, I'll put a link to a video where I've addressed that exact question, um, and I'll put okay. that there. A million thanks. Yeah, no problem. Okay. 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 All right, moving on to twenty five. Mm -hmm. Sign spaces on the side. Three cards and place them in your space. Oh, all those cards. It's fine. You're thinking. Okay. Oh, gotta go back. Hi, group. Um, as you're selecting your cards, try to think of different ways you might compare the cards. Common denominator is the most popular, but not the only way. And if you would like the um, visual manipulative to the right, you can actually move that vertical bar in order to check your work and line up the different fractions. Oh, oh thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I didn't mean, well, I, I, we, we're staying on start. Pull out the, oh my gosh, the cards. Okay. <laughs> I, can't. I just can't. There you go, guys. I'll, I'll move that little cover for you. Now you can, uh, now you can just take the cards right off the top. Okay. Perfect. Oh, okay, okay, all right, that's it, got it. I really like this activity. This is a good, I like how they have the fraction bars too. Yeah. It's a good accommodation. I would, I'm thinking too, you know, for um, younger kids, I would almost want to make the fraction bars individual pieces too so that if I have a kid that's still really needing that visual that it might be helpful for them to be moving over the piece from the fraction bar you know yeah they so still seeing the fraction and they can see them in order you know with the size of the piece as well as the um, you know, written fraction Hi group, I love your modification. I was considering that when I first made these and honestly just ran out of time. So I decided to use a little vertical line test. Um, and so if you have something like one eighth and a one sixth, you can just take that little vertical bar um, and line them up at either one eighth or one sixth um, and see which one is larger. Oh, that's cool. I like that. that cool. It's a real low tech kind of way of checking your work. <laughs> hmm. Okay. All right. Should we? Are we ready to move on to the next one? Yeah. Yes. We have six minutes. Do we want to just go straight down to twenty-eight so we can do another activity? instead of the reflection piece? Yes, everybody go directly to page to 28.
five more minutes. So how do we collaborate and interact with each other? Suggesting different solutions. And we talked out and confirmed answers with each other too. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know how to make things like this? This time, so it really feels like group work. Yeah. Except my partner's probably mad I'm putting everything in the garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> Can't make up my mind. <laughs> Uh, I did not do it because I'm not no longer a um, classroom teacher, but um, my student, my my son, his teacher did it, and he went very well actually. Um, she he's a second grader, and she would um, define the path, write the task, and then she would share that slide or that task with all the groups, and so they had that visual, and then she would jump from each group. Um, mm. Definitely. No, at first, um, and visual proof, look at that, wow, so then two red ones would be two over two, is that right? No, I think they want us to do like, If the oh. yellow is one hole, then how much is the trapezoid? Right. Yeah. Or like how many trapezoids do we need to create? Okay. Oh. Hi there, oh, girl. No. Listen. I can tell that you all have definitely done variations of this before. And one thing that I know when I go into my students' uh, breakout rooms, sometimes they do a task differently than I originally anticipated. And so I'm listening for then for the almost the right questions. Like, should we see how many trapezoids fit in a hexagon or um, how many hexagons fit into a trapezoid? When students are asking that question, I know they have the fractional sense that I'm hoping that they gained from this. So I can kind of use that in the math workshop uh, model. Nice.
<laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the main room. Can you believe you've already spent half an hour working through all those different math activities? And um, again, I wanted to, to be transparent that this is not the amount of wait time I would give my students for this. Um, instead, I'm trying to give you as educators a whole lot of ideas um, in turbo speed so that then you can modify them for your own classroom. All right, I'm gonna send you all the link again to our original slides, our whole group slides. That's in the chat box. So if you close the tab, go ahead and, and reopen uh, this chat box here. And join me on slide 19, 20, or 21. And this is our whole class exit ticket. So find a cell in either 19, 20, or 21, and tell us which fraction is larger, 1 99th or 1 100th. And go one step further and tell us how do you know. Again, I posted the link in the chat box in case you've closed your tab. And then um, just as a heads up uh, about, you know, this is eight activities. Um, and while we did that in 45 minutes, that wouldn't necessarily be appropriate for students to do. Um, and sometimes the way that I would choose to uh, do this is start off with that number routine. And then over several days, they kind of have this menu of the six other activities to do together. Some might be in the must do uh, category, some might be in the can do. Uh, and then we would always end as a whole class um, with some kind of a check for understanding. Um, so uh, on slide 23, um, slide 23 has the math workshop model uh, out of Jennifer Lemp's book. And um, today you kind of saw what it would uh, be like to be in uh, one of these um, models here. But there's some interesting pieces about online learning and that is the way you collaborate, you interact, and you have student voice. And that changes by the type of activity you give your students. So I'm down on slide 24 with this, I, this snapshot of what you did today. And I'd like to uh, hold a whole group conversation. Um, what did you notice was different about collaboration, interactive, uh, interaction and student voice in these different activities and why might you choose maybe one over another so from a teacher perspective go ahead and turn on your microphone and share with us how you use collaboration interaction and student voice here today um i have a self-contained math class so i wouldn't Student voices where everyone is in the room talking at the same time, correct? Oh, it kind of depends. Some of you all got student voice on slide 19, 20, and 21 without verbally um, speaking. Um, you had a place right there, but not everything okay. you had a place. Okay. So we have a variety of places. Rosemary, I see your microphone on. Would you like to go next? Yeah, I loved the, my favorite was the independent and small group when we were doing the pattern blocks. So in terms of your collaboration, were you guys talking together there or were you um, kind of dividing and conquering? More, I think, dividing and conquering, but talk, I think we were doing both. And that pattern block um, activity gave you all a space to kind of divide up, like, oh, I'll do the trapezoid, I'll do the rhombus, I'll do the triangle, but yet you're all in the same slide and they all kind of connect. But the problem I had, and it was great because I'm a special ed teacher, 
is I was lost a good part of the time. And so the higher ability people were able to do it better. And so I tended to watch more. And I see that happen all the time in, in classrooms where my special ed students, you know, the higher children are doing everything. And then the special ed student takes so long to catch up. So that was a great aha experience to be that special ed person. Well, and I think we have a variety of abilities and a variety of competencies um, across different areas, um, across the idea of manipulating something digitally or, um, you know, maybe some students were able to see common numerators as a strategy really quickly. Um, and this idea of the somebody being fast at it or someone uh, being you know the first yeah. to complete it, um, it it kind of shows off also in what teachers value so um, yeah. if I'm valuing that you make it through all eight of these then I'm showing students that hey I value you for being fast but if it is a little yeah. different and I'm looking for student a voice in each of these then they're going to work a little bit more collaboratively to make sure that everyone gets the um, the slide completed much like the toy fractions where you were all responsible for one of them. The other thing that I read too is don't put highs and the lowest together in a group. It'd be better to put your special ed students with medium ability. Well, and I think we've got different um, ways that, that students perform um, even with disabilities or, or not. And um, so you're definitely going to need to use your teacher brain and all of the um, data that you have to inform groups. If you check out uh, Jennifer Lump's book, sometimes she'll even mention that you can have these different stations without looking at student ability at all. Um, it might be that everybody gets the exact same um, stations to do. It might also be that you have a group of students on this learning progression that is really working on identifying common numerators. And so you might only choose two or three yeah. of these activities for that particular group. So it's all very careful um, grouping and considerations there. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be on ability level. And there's a lot of other uh, variety of ways that you can do that. Who else has an idea about um, how they collaborated, interacted, or had voice in some of these different modalities? Hi, Anne, go ahead. I think one of the things with, as I was going through one of these, I was like, wait a minute, I'm not quite sure I understand this. Do I need to go back and watch the video in the group? They're like, oh, wait, hold on, do this. And I think it gave you kind of a safe place to ask questions and for, quote unquote, feel, feel dumb, <laughs> you know, and you feel a little bit more supported and that allows you to give your voice mm -hmm. and ask questions. I heard so much support happening in the different groups, um, both with the mathematics and the tech side. I heard a lot of just comforting support from each other. Amaya, go ahead. Hi, I was just going to say that another way to provide voice is really by providing choice. And I think all of those activities were open-ended and gave students an ability, to, or us, I guess, to choose depending on our level of comfort as to which and how we wanted to show, like we could choose which fraction we wanted to, to do or in the, in the ones where you're doing the card, the, playing the game, you know, you can, you could discard a card if you needed to. So just the, the, the choice provides voice. Absolutely. Um, and I know some people are exploring the different ways that they give choice. And sometimes it's more of a guided um, type of problem, like you had with the Cuisinaire rods, um, where there very much was a right answer and a right way of filling it in. Um, but then once you got the hang of it, you were able to play with the Cuisinaire rods and make your own um, proportional um, observations there. Go ahead, Mike. Yes, what I uh, particularly liked, and it was pointed out when we did the uh, small group activity by the uh, lady that puts out the book, L-A-M-O-N, Lamon. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, that one, you know, for some students, the number thing is just a hindrance to math. 
and that one I really liked because it was already a template that was broken up into different sizes and then it allowed them to some some students are just simply stronger in spatial the, the visual piece um, and and I we didn't get to the independent small group one with the trapezoid that I see down there but uh, that's another one where the the pressure of having to deal with numbers uh, is off in, in that one so uh, I really like that one and uh, a member of our group uh, pointed me in the direction of that that book which she says will really be interesting so I'm looking forward to that Oh, that is the greatest book ever written on fractions, in my humble opinion. I am always uh, amazed by another way of looking at things. So if you're looking for a good summer math reading, check that one out. Um, Allison, go ahead. Um, for the independent and small group activity where we all chose three fractions and ordered them, um, I think when there are four people in a group and we pull up on a slide like that where there are four spaces to work, it naturally gives each person in the group um, voice. And also, as Amaya mentioned earlier, um, the amount of choice that that slide contained, not only in choosing the fractions, but also in how we order them. Um, and I thought it was really cool to see everybody working at the same time. And so you kind of actively see people's voices happening at once. Indeed, Allison. And in that one, when you give all the group members a place to work on the same slide, that's how you can collaborate without even using audio. That's especially useful for our students who, um, much like we talk about introverts and extroverts in the classroom, we have students who like to use the microphone and might not like to use it. And so this is a place where you really can um, have a great voice without using the mic. At the very end, I asked you all to complete an exit ticket. This is really the check for understanding I wanted to, to look at, um, is we're not going to sit here and model 1 99th or 1 100th. Um, but in the activities you've done, it should have guided you to thinking about ways to compare numerators, um, same numerators with different denominators. How did you feel about the voice that you had even when we were a whole class? Go ahead, Melanie. Oh, uh, don't forget to turn on your microphone. Click that. Um, I clicked it too fast and kept going. I liked <laughs> how I could go ahead and type my response, and, and I did that first, but then reading other people's, I processed and read them again, and I was automatically comparing and contrasting my thinking to their thinking and how mine was different than people's in the same as people. Yes, absolutely. And this is one of my favorite ways of getting student voice and keeping my students engaged online because this is something that I can't simulate in the face-to-face -face classroom. Um, and so I'm hoping that you consider some of the, um, the different ways that we saw student voice today. Sometimes it was through actually using the microphone. Sometimes it's dividing and conquering. Sometimes you get your own personal slide. Everything you did today was interactive in some way. Um, and you were working together with your um, group mates in different ways. So when you're implementing Math Workshop online, it's important to not only think of the fun activities to do, I know that's my most excited spot, I want to find all the fun stuff, but also finding different ways to differentiate the type of collaboration, the type of interaction, and the different ways that you get student voice. Um, so folks, I'm going to have uh, this recording up available by tomorrow morning along with templates. Um, I hope that you um, gained a couple ideas about Math Workshop. Um, and I'm going to stay after for anyone who is interested in discussing uh, questions in the virtual parking lot. It's been a pleasure and um, hope you guys take a couple tips with you. Uh, some of these virtual parking lot, oh, uh, there was one other thing. Uh, I'll share my screen so you can kind of see what I was doing today. Um, I was moving around to all of your different slides. 
So this is what my tabs look like. You'll notice my naming convention of the group number first, and that's so I can have a lot of tabs open and see all the different groups. And when I go into a group, I can quickly move down and look for those little avatar bubbles. So nobody from group seven is logged in right now. I can tell that from it. Here in group one, I can see one person's on slide 37. Um, and there might be other people up here. So I can quickly move to my student slides and figure out, oh, they're on this slide right here and, and um, follow along with them. So that's a great feature within Google Slides that helps me just to follow along. All right. Um, oh, Joy, uh, I have a... Um, um, a student in my uh, program who uses Microsoft Teams exclusively um, and she is at a school in DC. I'd be happy to connect uh, you with her if you send me an email. Um, I will send, I'll forward that to her and then she can respond back to you. Um, but she's a great resource for Microsoft Teams. And starting at the end of June, I'm going to explore different platforms that I give my PD in. How long to create each lesson? Um, can I, I think these are two questions, so I'll answer this first one. How long to create each lesson? Um, it depends. So what I've given you all, I would use for over an entire week. Um, I'd probably have students work on that for four days uh, with new exit tickets every day throughout the week. Um, and any template that I make, I try to find at least five to seven different ways of using that template. That way I'm using my time wisely. I would do the same thing in a face-to-face -face class though. If I was actually gonna cut out these fraction deck of cards, I wouldn't use it for just one task, I would use it for many. Um, so one might be ordering, one might be comparing, one might be playing doubles war. Um, and so um, I'll be posting a couple of those other templates so you can see different ways of reusing the templates that you make. Um, can you save this to check for um, accuracy? So one thing you can do when you're finished, your, your students are done, if you don't want them ever to edit the slides again, you can go in the share settings and change it from an editor to a viewer only, and then the students won't be able to edit them again. So you've always, you can use these for grading purposes or for uh, checking in later. Um, can we use these templates? Absolutely. Um, on my website, I have an area for templates and there's things that have spaces available for you. Um, if you head down to the math routines, there's a lot of templates specific for math. Um, and you'll see there's some of these games in there as well. Uh, so you can use any of those. They're downloadable. Just click it and make a copy. Um, how did you create breakout rooms so rapidly? Uh, check out this video here. Um, and I've got that so you can see. Um, I just click on this little like green arrow. How are you able to keep the boxes in place and still have them writable? Um, I have a video on that. Let's see. Projects. I'm linking the videos because I think they save time. You can go back to them. And I have a habit of rambling, so I like to be able to just give you something quick and easy. All right, there's a link for that one, um, locking slides. Are there any add-ons for math fonts? Oh, yes, uh, Equatio. But if you're using fractions, here's my tip for fractions. Don't make it harder than you need to. Um, just like if I was going to make equatio over two, I would just use an underline for the word equatio. Um, and now it, it looks like a fraction because the numerator is just underlined. So sometimes you want to use, um, you know, math type, but sometimes it just it makes it too complicated. Just use features like the underline. Yeah, someone's doing it in the corner. Yeah, there you go. Um, and then if you want to get really fancy, um, you know, some people really like the, the techie side of it. Um, yeah. If you change the spacing between it, 
um, you can make it like 0.8 for example and you'll see that 2 just got a little closer to your fraction line and looks a little bit nicer um, and again that's the line spacing tool all right let's see um, I'm gonna move arrows so you all can see where I am um, how do you set up the anonymous when you're typing there are several ways that you can share your Google Slides in a share settings. If you type in people's email addresses, which is a nice secure way of making sure your students are your students in your slides, you can share it that way. You can also share a link. Now, you should be aware of the security risks of the link. If you've got uh, kiddos who feel like sharing that link with strangers on the web, that means strangers on the web will come on to your slide as an anonymous chipmunk or some other anonymous thing and start to write whatever they feel like writing. Uh, to make it more secure, you can share it by email addresses. When I do adult learners, I like to have us in the most open space possible. And if something like that shows up, we'll use it as a learning experience. Um, so yes, if they um, join by email, um, you will be able to see those students. I have a video for that too. Let me just find it. Here we go, six ways to share Google Slides. All right, let's get this little arrow. Um, what is the name of the book on fractions? Uh, sure, let me get that Lamont book for you. There's a variety of ways of sharing it. There's the name of that book. Oh, everything's writing on top of each other. I'm going to move it to the side here. Um, alrighty, let's see. How do you make sure students stay appropriate when they're anonymous? Um, usually with my students, I don't keep them anonymous, but I do have a whole session. Um, you can register for on classroom management and accountability where we talk about um, the different norms that are needed to have a manageable class online. So um, much like kindergarten teachers might be nervous about the first time they do a show and tell, kindergarten teachers will tell you the amount of time and investment they do on norms, rules, and routines and practicing the routines and practicing and practicing and holding students accountable every single time so that they get that structure. You'll do the same thing online and you can check that out in um, one of the other sessions I do. Um, Melanie, you asked about um, six through eight. Um, I would imagine uh, for you, just on your background and the way that you connect the mathematics, absolutely. But if you were um, working with teachers who might not do group work in the 6-8 setting, if group work is maybe new to them, um, they might have a harder time making the connections. Um, so it depends on the background knowledge of the teacher, I'd say. Um, are the other math workshop sessions the same as this one? Currently, yes. Over the summer, though, I'll make some other modules. This one's fractions. I know that that's uh, one that a lot of teachers um, are trying to look for activities on. Um, I've already got one started on um, proportionality and um, uh, additive versus multiplicative thinking. But uh, we'll see when those get out. I'll try and get some other activities out this summer. Um, someone asked about conceptual rigor. Um, I do a lot of work in rich tasks. If you want to check those out uh, every Saturday, I do those. And then um, in the secondary area, you can actually have the groups do uh, a lot more with the technology because they are developmentally ready for more competencies such as creating their own slides, creating their own text boxes within it, using things like Desmos and GeoGebra um, and embed those in the slides or take pictures within it. Um, and so again, it's 
um, for me, it's exactly what I would have done in the classroom, just that they have a space online to post it. Um, if you have a specific topic, we can chat about that and see how to turn it online. I think I've gotten to all of the topics here. If I miss something, let me know. If you have other questions, feel free to turn on your mics and ask them. And otherwise, if not, happy online learning and hope to see you at some other sessions.